Hi, howdy, hello, everybody. It's me, Fully Suited Up Zoodles here, and welcome back to the Minecraft Guide. Day number 500. Almost. Today, it's time you sit back, get cozy, and relax. In today's episode, in honor of the first 500 days of this world, we're gonna take a look back at literally everything. It's time for a good old fashioned world tour, kicking things off at World Spawn, moving over to the Cherry Blossom base, and getting everything in between. Down below in the comments, I need to know what has been your favorite build or project this entire season so far. Was it the Sugarcane Farm, Gertrude's Landing, or something else? Tell me about it down below. I love to hear. If you've been enjoying the series so far, tap like, and if you're new here, I welcome to the Minecraft Guy. All right, now, as the sun slowly sets on the horizons of our beautiful base over here, I, I think we should roll it back and take it back to where we started. I'll meet you there. As the sun slowly rises on day number 500, here we are back home sweet home. Spawn sweet spawn. Inside of this world, we kicked everything off homely way back over at spawn sweet spawn. It's literally right at world spawn. It's in a forest biome that kind of smashes into his Bruce biome and it's quaint, it's small, it's nice and humble. Oh yeah, and Sky Tower over there. So the Minecraft Guide is our little survival let's play tutorial let's play Minecraft series. We kicked everything off in Minecraft 1.20, like literally a couple days after the update released. Right now as it stands today, I'm in 1.20.1, but as soon as I have to find updates, I'll update the world too. And for this world, I did a little bit of seed curating and wanted to find a seed that was like the ultimate origin story, like a basic simple forest. I mean, I don't know about you, but maybe other than the planes, it doesn't get more start or early game than this. I think I did a world seed reveal in like probably episode 5 or something like that, I don't know. This tree right here is technically speaking the founder of it all, Founder's Tree. The very first log in this world that literally kicked off everything and brought us a diamond armor, I converted it to the crafting table and it stands strong here to this very day right there. Now one of my big obsessions with this world was cherry trees, it was brand new. I knew I would have to move out and find these sweet pretty pink petals, they're just so gorgeous. But anyways, starter house, sweet humble little starter house. For this thing, I wanted to build, like, basically the ultimate starter house. Like, you close your eyes and envision one. That's what I was hopefully going for. And, I mean, I don't know. I feel like I kind of pulled it off. It's basically just a square house, except in one of the corners is just a porch. Inside of the house, I have, like, a little bit of storage situation going on. We got our OG frame for the map right there. The classic red bed. The skeleton skull. A little bit of extra loot. You know how it goes. I put a back door on this house too, just in case of emergency. You know, it's so sad. I hate to be so sad so soon, but poor Billy Bob. The first zombie that was slain inside of this world. At least I think. Hey, oh, by the way, channel members, there's a world download out to commemorate 500 days. It's out right now. You can probably jump into the world and follow the tour, like check it all out, everything like that. I think you'll start over here because like I said, world spawn is like literally in that patch of grass right over there. You'll probably end up spawning over here because like I said, world spawn is literally in that patch of grass right over there. Now over here, we got our simple little starter farm. Not much to say about that. And then a couple sheep that I, they, they chose to live inside of the pen forever. Over here was the old fashioned Camelotto. Sweet Camelotto's pen. It's a camel that we met in episode like seven or something. They lived over there for the longest time. Over here, the classic, the amazing, the cow crusher. Fueled food needs early game for like quite some time. And kind of still does to this day, but just in a different spot. Now my idea with world spawn over here was to kind of like cover the early game of minecraft so like the first 20 or so episodes maybe like 21 episodes i consider that chapter one of the series right now we're kind of in like maybe chapter two sliding into chapter three of the series but yeah chapter one was all about early game minecraft and really like building this whole base up in one of the episodes we talked all about how to do potions and everything that's kind of like one of the big things of the guide tips tricks you know farms everything like that and while we were talking about potions, we built this humble, simple little, I don't know what you call it, maybe like potion shack, beautiful brewing station, I don't know, you know, something like that. It's for potions right there. I thought the blue on the top was really shocking and cool at the time, and yeah, I kind of still love it to this day. That building, that's all about smeltery. We did an episode on furnaces. Now over here, this was all about one of the easiest, best early game things to farm in the entire world. Sure, sure, valid. It might not be the best food in the world, but sweet berries, oh, sweet, beautiful berries. I think this was like, Mel. I, in guide season three, I built a gigantic sweet berry farm. So I think that was probably bigger, but this is like biggest for how early it was on in the game for me. And, and now that I look at it here, maybe I need to like actually just, just one up it, build a bigger farm over at the new base. 
This build specifically, I think was the first build that I did with cherry wood, and I just still love this build to this day. It's so simple. Like, it's nice and open, but like, this gateway right there, the awning, it's so cool looking. Oh, wait, what's that? Oh, yeah, that's right. And also, berry collection out now. <laughs> to kick this farm in the world off, right? Right when I designed this, I dropped this whole berry summary themed merch collection. I think it's still in the store. So then, aside from what's across the river over there, Nether Sword, we'll talk about it in a minute, that's basically it for Spawn Sweet Spawn. Over here at the spawn base, I took a little bit of time and tried to spawn proof everything. So it's like pretty nice and lit up all around over here. If you were chilling in this area, like more specifically inside of the buildings by the paths, you should be like relatively safe. Oh yes, that's right. Chicken farm. I forgot about you. You've been running for a long time, haven't you? But, uh, yeah, I think, well, oh, no, 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 there's one more thing. There's one more big thing. Every single world needs it. We just talked about it. How could I almost forget? One final thing over here at Spawn that actually, um, I don't know if I ever mentioned this, but I never technically fully finished this whole thing over here. Across the river from, uh, like, Spawn, on the starter house right over there, we've got a dock. We've got a dock that turns into a road that eventually, I, at least I used to, I don't know if I'll do it anymore, but eventually, at one point, I wanted to, like, come back over here and, like, put a proper building up on the surface to mark it. After all, down here, this operation is very important. This is still, to this day, one of the... I kind of hate to say it, but one of the only experience farms in this entire world. It's a zombie experience farm. There's a zombie spawner in there. You know, drops them in. They go up. They fall down. They're one hit. You, like, take them out over there. Right over here is also, like, the only level 30 enchantment setup in this entire world. Anytime I want to do any enchanting, I need to go from the other base, which is our permanent one. We don't come to spawn anymore. And, like, enchant over here. It's kind of a bit of a walk. And definitely on the doo-doo list is, like, fix up the armor that I have right here. It's, like, decent. And at some point, build an enchanting setup that is just as good, if not even better, over at the new permanent base. So, like I mentioned, we spent, like, the first 20 or so episodes of the series, entirety of Chapter 1 over here, going through Minecraft's early game. From, like, your very start, the starter house, mining, everything like that, all the way up until eventually you take on the Ender Dragon. After that, like, like, literally right after that, I knew it was time to move. Nether Swordle. I built this thing when I was talking about nether portals for the first time in this world, and I think it's beautiful. It's like a giant sword sticking straight down into the ground. I don't think I ever built a nether portal that is like a sword before, at least in a video for like YouTube or anything like that. So this was like my first one, and I don't know, it was just like on that bucket list of something that I always wanted to do. I think it turned out pretty nice, and of course, you know, being 1.20 cherry wood and all, I knew I had to use the pink wood in the design up there, so it's like popping through on the handle. I love this portal. Just genuinely, I think this is the best portal that I have ever built in all of my time playing Minecraft. And it's like pretty simple too. So spawn, sweet spawn, right here at the evening, day number 500. I think that's just about everything over here. Next stop, over to the nether. As soon as we slide into the portal over here in the nether, the first thing that we see is an ice road. This ice road is a way more recent project. I didn't put this in until like pretty recently. Over there, we've got an option to go to the witch farm. More on that later, we'll come back. And then over here, we've got the other option to go all the way over to the cherry grove biome. For this world, being Minecraft 1.20 and all, and then with that beautiful brand new biome filled with particles in, I knew that I would have to probably like end up settling over at that biome. Early on, I kind of set this like little condition that I would need to explore. And I, I knew I wanted to find a cherry blossom biome with some beautiful mountains in the background. I did a tiny bit of exploring and eventually, I think like, actually, no, 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 correction. Like I know, like as soon as I found my first cherry tree, it was off in the distance over there by a mountain. I kind of saw this area and knew I would come back to it one day. So this area, this humble, sweet little area over here is currently, nowadays, as of current, like currently current. Exactly right now, this beautiful moment, this base is our entire living, our home, our heart and soul. This is where we live and thrive and survive and everything like that. Slowly but surely, ever since episode number 20, we've been building up this area, trying to like, uh, basically I have a simple goal to make this my best world that I love the most ever. There are still definitely some like giant holes in it. For example, this area right here, maybe we'll take that on like soon next episode or something. But for the most part, where it's starting to come in and be like built up together, I really like it. It feels like really cozy. Oh yeah, and cozy. Cozy is like one of my main rules for this base. But I think we should start kind of with that mountain over there. So in this world, I think every single episode so far, I play with render distance of 30. It's going to be like just out of render distance, like a little bit out of it. But over there, that mountain, you can kind of see it in the distance. In fact, maybe it's not even out of render distance. I think there was like an OG cherry tree over there. I had found this mountain. It was really beautiful. And I think I probably noticed this one in the background around them. 
The mountain in this area is pretty cool because it's kind of got like big caves all over the mountain. I've checked out some of them, some of them I haven't yet, and I found something beautiful underneath the mountain as well. I put a lot of thought into like this specific location that I wanted to build my base at. Essentially, I was going for this like peaceful mountain valley vibe or something like that that I said at the time. I basically wanted to build my starter house and have this big tall looming mountain in the background. I knew I wanted to build like up on the mountains, but also still like have big mountains in the background. So that's kind of why we picked this location. Now this spot right over there, that house, that was the first build that we built over here. This is kind of like starter house 2.0. And for this build, I was inspired by, well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it anymore, but if I can, I'll pop it up. But this picture right here, I was really inspired by it. I wanted to basically also take one single shape and show off that, like, yeah, you could make something pretty cool looking out of a shape. So it's just, like, one simple rectangle. That's the back wall, front wall, side wall, and the other side wall over there. On the inside, way more recently, I made it a little bit more cozy after, like, so many requests. Uh, i still sorry that took so long. Uh, it'll never happen again. So over here is like the trophy room, the living space. Eventually, I want to put a dragon skull over there. I think that'll be cool. And then maybe, uh, now that I think about it, I could put like the dragon egg on the mantle too, maybe. We got a little bit of bookshelves in here, a little bit of maps of everything I've seen in the world, including our base right there, the spawn starter base right there. And then this actually goes up to the stronghold that we were just at like an episode ago. The room's cozy. It's simple. It's like a living space with like a quick, easy sleeping spot. And moving over, we've got our dear friend Bonzo. Bonzo is the brains, the heart, the everything good about this world. I love Bonzo so much. Bonzo is our best friend in the world and has been with us for like a long time. Maybe since like day 10 or I don't know. Well, it was like really early on in the world. Long time. Anyways, this is a kitchen right there. Got to use that new 1.20 wood bamboo as well. Can't sleep on it. Upstairs, I've got a little bedroom. Not too much going on up here. Just a, a closet with some of the tools and things that I found. A bed and a little bit of a nice view. Eventually, hopefully, by the end of this world, this will be filled out and be a beautiful view with, like, more builds across the way over there and more down there and, you know, everything like that. Moving back down over here, spinning around, we've got the storage room. It's really not much right now. It's definitely small and cramped and a little bit disorganized. In fact, like, looking at it now, I don't know why I don't, like, condense some of this stuff down into blocks. Hey, that's the first one. I definitely should probably be better about condensing this stuff down into blocks, but yeah, the storage room. When it comes to diamond count right now... I, well, don't worry about it, don't worry. It's not looking too odd, okay? Backtracking, burb, interdimensional demon. I don't know how the demon traveled all the way to here from like seasons and seasons ago. And then over here, we've got Camelotl and... Well, I don't know if I've ever named you before. Have I named that camel? Oh, help. Now, next up, there's not going to be really any way that I can go in order. So we'll just kind of like follow the path, walk around the base and talk about it. This is a beautiful little statue that I built for, like, a bonus build. The bonus builds were a thing we were doing for a while where, like, at the end of every episode, I would come back and build something random. I built a statue. I built a... Well, I didn't build a flying orb. It just kind of popped up there. But, yeah, you know how it goes. Over here, Betty and Jean. And then a couple other sniffers as well. These things. This is one of the first things. Or maybe, like, the second thing that I built over here at the base. You know, being 1.20, you know, I saw some questions about it at the time. Like, why you build a sniffer farm right away? Isn't there more important things? But, like, no, 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 no. This is the most important thing by far. Because look at this. I built the thing so early on, and I've been farming these things nonstop. And, ah, look, I don't know, pal, buddy, if you've ever seen any more sniffer flowers than ever in your life before. This is a simple little farm with, like, bees that, like, speeds up the pollination, everything like that. It's pretty nice. From time to time, I come over here and harvest up the honeycombs. Absolutely need to build a bee farm soon, though. I want to build, like, an automatic one. I love me a good farm that produces me things for free, especially if they turn into blocks. This building right here is kind of just, like, a random build. It's empty nowadays, but it was essentially, like, a villager holding cell. I imported some villagers from all across the world over at the base and eventually moved them over to the villager breeder. While I held them there for like a couple episodes of time, I wanted to build like a nice simple house and give them a cool view over the valley. You know how it goes. Ethics, morals. This area, I think it'll eventually become maybe a little bit more of a centerpiece area, but for now it's kind of off to the side. It's a showcase of every single wood type in the game that we've gone out and found so far. I did an episode like talking all about that, and then we've got a simple little fountain. I also wanted to make a garden with every single tree type in the game as well. Other than the nether trees, they don't really fit the vibe, but yeah. Moving on, we've got another statue that I didn't build. Interdimensional Demon summoned that boy in. And then we've got Bonzo's Bridge, named after Dear Bonzo and no incidents that never, ever happened over here. Trust me, it's been fine the whole time. It's a cool, big, long bridge that kind of sags across the whole valley, canyon, whatever you... Fjord, fjord. It sags across the whole fjord and leads over to the other side of the base. 
eventually, not quite yet, but eventually one day, we're gonna have a bunch of, like, more base stuff over here. Maybe it's gonna be a big farm, maybe it's gonna be just, like, more buildings, you know how it goes, but yeah, we're gonna have more stuff over here. This thing right here is the evil, the nasty, the maybe only experience farm, now that I think about it, over here, the poison spider farm. If we go ahead and jump down in here, it's gonna take us all the way down to a spider. Actually, two spider spawners that I found inside of a mine shaft is actually a double spider farm. If I stand over here by this crafting table, both spider spawners are active, and eventually it'll, you know, spawn the spiders, drop them in, they go over here, and I swing at them with my sword and, you know, take them out. Experience and drops go into the chest. The same thing with this one over here. This is my favorite spawner farm room inside of this world. I mean, look, there's not much competition, but I think my detailing work is like off the charts here. I got deep slate all over, red to match the eyes of the spider, dark oak wood or spruce, whatever that is. And I don't know. I just think it uh, turned out really, really nice, strong, and like exactly what my vision was for this room. I love this farm. Now, speaking of that farm, there's actually quite a few episodes, like actually a lot of episodes that we've gone through in this series where we're like, say, exploring, talking about mine shafts, maybe the deep dark biome, you know, things like that, that like, we're not going to really be able to talk about inside of this, um, this episode because there's nothing to show. With the series kind of being like a survival, let's play tutorial -y series, I try and like base every episode on something. So there's like at least one bit of potentially useful information in every single episode. The useful bit of information in this one is... Well... Let me, let me get back to the, uh, let me get back to you on that one. I'll think about it. Armadillo, the armadillo. From Minecraft to Mofo 2023, I built the penguin up there. I built an armadillo right there. And then there's actually a crab sitting right over there. This view right now is one of my favorite views of the entire base because, I mean, well... Like, you can see the entire base. Every single build that we built over there kind of, like, just shows off so nicely absolutely i need to fill that hole behind the man it's like really starting to drive me a little crazy but yeah it's like a nice view of everything that we built at the base or most of it this thing over here so i like to try and like provide something of value in every single episode for you guys also like make it fun and everything like that but this one this was definitely one of those projects that's just like a little bit more for fun this is the world's biggest cookie farm you're looking at it right here we've got a giant wheat field over here and then i have cocoa beans growing on the other side I take the wheat, I take the cocoa, I combine them and make a giant, beautiful cookie. We did this in honor of episode 30 when I had, like, moved over to the base. I was young and young, dumb, blind, and excited. I don't know. Anyways, the next up build over here that I need to build something up on the surface for. Uh, there's kind of a lot on the to-do list. This build. This is by far the favorite, my best amethyst farm that I have ever built. I took a geode and basically blew it up, like, expanded it. We got the basalt on the ceiling, a little bit of calcite up there, too. Still not sure on that one. But then an amethyst farm all over the place. I can walk around down here, use my pickaxe, you know how it goes. Amethyst farm, harvest the stuff, everything like that. I might actually come back around to this one a little bit later on and buff it up too. But, but more on that later. This thing over here is a door that leads to the mine shaft, and it's actually the same mine shaft that has that double spider spawner set up in it. I got so lucky with this geo. Down here in the rain, the pouring rain. Why is there rain during my tour? No, oh no. Ah, that ruins it. That ruins it. All right, one day later, hopefully that doesn't happen again. One day later, and now it's clear. Back to the tour. So over here, this other side of the base, that's actually just about it for now. Absolutely, you need to come back over here and build a proper building to mark the Amethyst Farm. That's another project that I should probably take on soon. But now let's cut back over to the other side. So walking around this base so far today, I'm actually kind of like surprised uh, talking about every single build, build by build. I didn't think I like actually maybe had so much going on, but I guess I kind of do. Over here, as you can probably guess by the noisy, beautiful sounds of it, we've got the world's best, most overpowered, apparently, villager Braider. This thing is going to lag the entire world out. I need to shut it off, probably. Anyways, though, up top here, we've got two villagers to power it all. They're madly, deeply in love. They walk around. They make it the baby. The baby runs over here and falls, and, you know, the cycle continues on forever. One of my favorite things about this build, other than how it, like, adds to the skyline of this side of the base, is what I did up top with, like, a giant villager skull on the side. I think it's so cool. Oh, and, and don't worry, don't worry. I didn't, like, source that from a villager or nothing. It's just, like, a, a scaled-up recreation or nothing. I'm 100% ethical always. I, I promise. Why would, you, why would you not think? Anyways, this is where Frodor lives. Frodor lives inside of a dirt shack over here. Frodor wanted to, though, so yeah. From over here, which is a little bit more of, like, the wild west of the base. It's a bit more unfinished. You kind of get a cool view of, like, the inside of everything. The farm right there that I just harvested before the episode. The back of the sniffer building. And, you know, everything else. 
I guess moving along this way, way right in front of our face. Oh, my friend, you, your timing couldn't be any more on point. This is the wonderful iron bar. I'm actually almost filling up here. I need to, like, go ahead and empty that thing. But, yeah, wonderful iron farm. Every single good Minecraft base needs one of these things. Eventually, we're going to have so much more iron than I could have ever dreamed of. I could build, like, giant Iron Man statue or something like that. But uh, next up, let's cut back over to this area. So this is the spot that I want to finish. We have the sniffer farm over there. Right there, dead center, is a nether portal. This is how you come in, come out of the base. I got a little bit of a cool, hazy fog going on over here. I built this actually, like, pretty early on, and it's a really easy build trick to pull off, too. I knew I wanted to have a nether portal, like, nice and conveniently centered over here at the base, and I wanted to make it, like, a little bit different. So this is, like, weird chemicals or something from the nether spilling out. Like, I should probably come in here and take care of the chemical situation, but at the same time, I kind of like it. It's hazy, it's foggy, it's pretty cool. We got another road that kind of cuts up over here. Iron farm that we were just at, but right in front of the iron farm is another beautiful must-have farm. The lava farm, my sweet, beautiful baby. This thing, I built it up down here with lava sources, and then after that, I've kind of had to, like, slowly start just, like, filling this chest up with buckets, and as you can see, it's ready to harvest again. This thing is so wonderful. I'm so grateful that I decided to build this thing early on. Like, with this lava farm built over here in the base, anytime I need fuel for smelting a lot of things, like, say, like, stone that I had to smelt for the sugarcane tower that we built, it's, like, perfect. I just have fuel waiting, ready to go. All that I really need to add on to, like, maximize this thing right here is, like, some kind of super auto smelter somewhere over at the base that I could dump the lava buckets into. Maybe even, like, store them over there. It's also pretty good for getting obsidian, too, if I need to. Sugarcane farm, sugarcane farm, the tallest, the baddest, the coolest build in the entire world. I keep harvesting this thing in between episodes, and it's kind of slowly starting to rake up here. This thing is beautiful for a couple different reasons. I mean, of course, it's sugarcane. I can run around in here and manually harvest everything. It's also great for a good view. Also, also, though, it's great for, uh, again, rain. Really, it's gonna rain again. Uh, and no, even worse, it's gonna thunderstorm this time. Stop it, leave me alone. Oh, no. I swear, it was meant to rain like every couple Minecraft today. It's not like every day. Hey, anyways, I could also take the paper from this farm and sell it. We built an emerald farm. We'll get to it eventually. But the view. Oh, did I tell you the view? The view is like... Well, I'll admit it. This thing probably contributes to the skyline and the view a little bit more than it does view right now. But eventually, it'll be a really good view. I can, I can feel it. Definitely. Cool thing about this one, kind of fun to use, is uh, from the top, you could jump all the way down, land right at the bottom, and, you know, dump everything away. But, like, the whole jump is really fun. This is by far the tallest build of the entire world. Now, right next to that, eventually, I want to have this path continue out over this way. I'm just kind of waiting until eventually I build more builds over here. But going over this way, we've got the one, the only, the lovely, the call, the food farm. This is where it all happens. The magic is made inside of this building. We've got the wild free room cows over there at the home. Then we've got a smoker station right there with lava from across the road. Then I've got my friends over here that every once in a while I, you know, take the weed, walk over to them, talk to them, you know, soothe them and... You know, feed them. They get to have a good last meal, and then after that, they magically transport to the hop. It's pretty cool. For this farm, I wanted to do a whole all-in-one, so I actually went ahead and built a wheat farm over here, too, so I could, like, have every single line of this production service in here. I flick the lever, the water pours down, the crops get harvested, then I walk over here, and, you know, like I just did, I feed them. Now, next up, moving around over here, we've got this beautiful thing right here, the bamboo farm. This is another farm that we built a long time ago. You gotta build one of these things that your base get established because, I mean, nowadays, you have to have heard, bamboo is literally wood. This is a free automatic wood farm that is, like, decently efficient as well. Also, if I wanted to, I don't think I ever have ever since I grew up, but we've got the manual wood farm on the inside, too. I could walk in here with my sword, chop it all down, but the, the manual one's a little bit more for aesthetics. I wanted it to grow through the ceiling because I thought that would be cool. For this world, it's really all about, like, how the base comes together, at least for me. I built the bamboo farm, then I added the build over there, then I added the build, like, tall in the background, that one a little before, and, yeah, I don't know, I think it all just comes together, and, like, when you stand in a spot where you can only see finished things, it looks really good and feels, like, so, I, like, it just feels nice. I want to make a world that feels so nice to be in. So over here, behind us, uh, here we've got our house, that's the storage room side of the house, then we've got this building, and we've got this building. Would you take a look at the roof? I didn't even notice until the second, but finally it's oxidizing. 
with this build right here, I wanted to have fully oxidized roof. At least I think I want to have it. I guess I'll have to, like, wait and see until it fully oxidizes. Then maybe I'll come back and wax it all. But, but, but anyways, inside of this building, our dear friend Mendels. Mendels resides and lives over here. You need mending anytime? Oh, not a problem at all. You can walk over to him and buy mending. 14 emeralds. It's a pretty low price. I guess it could be technically a little better, but... Hey, we don't worry about it. 14 is, is a piece of cake, especially with my emerald farms inside of the world. It's a quaint, a small, simple little house here. You got everything a librarian worker could ever dream of. On the bookshelf over here, I'm currently storing all of my different enchanted books that I've gotten. There's no, like, logic to how it's organized, just kind of everything thrown in here, but... But, you know, Minecraft 1.20, adding all of those beautiful new useful blocks, especially that bookshelf. You gotta do it. Legally, you have to. Last and almost, uh, well, almost last, definitely not least, we've got a brand new building over here. This is the paper machine, the Emerald Titan, with, well, with the pot on the porch. I don't think I ever showed you that one. It's one of the shirts that I had in the chest. It made too much sense. It's like, you know, a paper map salesman. I had to put the map pot on the porch. It made too much sense. Eventually, we updated the game and maybe store something in it. But inside of here, today's comment of the day, at long last, I... I kept forgetting. I'm, I'm so sorry about this, but the villager's name is Mapples Zodak 9999B. I did a name naming contest and Zodak won. This is a master level cartographer villager. We got the paper farm right there, all the way down to the globe banner pattern and some cool maps in between. Yeah, so by the way, in the Minecraft guide series, none of the experimental toggles are turned on. This is just like, it's just like whatever isn't like in main Minecraft right now. So no like, so no like villager updates, no bundle, no 1.21, nothing like that. We'll get around to it eventually once it's fully out. With this area over here, I was kind of thinking it would be nice. So of course, not only have the mending villager nice and separate from all the other villager farms, like the iron farm and everything, but also like in a safe spot that I could almost make like a town vibe situation going on. That's kind of what my thinking was with putting the whole paper farm right here. It's also right down the road from the proper paper farm. So I get the paper and I get the emeralds. Then I take it next door and it's all streamlined. It makes sense. It also almost makes like a small little village over here, which I thought was cool. This beautiful beauty over here. I haven't really had the time to AFK quite yet. So the drops are not going to be impressive. But very recently, as in like basically an episode ago, we built this mob farm in the sky. Basically, hostile mobs spawn in the mob farm. They fall all the way down here, and inside of the chest, the mob drops go. Like I said, I haven't really been around over here at the base long enough, though, for this to, like, really be, like, in a position where I could show off how it really, truly works and everything like that. I also need to run around and light up some of the caves that I know are right underneath the surface. It's a pretty cool build, though, and I think over time, if I let this thing run, it's gonna be, like, pretty good for stocking up on a lot of the mob drops. Next up, here's a crab. I mean, I don't know. I don't know about you, but that's definitely, absolutely, 100% a crab. And so, with that, I think, unless I've missed something, I'm pretty sure, 100 and, uh, but, I mean, 96% sure that I have hit every single thing that we've built over at this base. There have been some cool things that we found underneath the base and things that we found near the base, but everything that we built added to it, I think that's it so far. Next stop of the day is back over to the nether for us. So inside of the nether here, this is the origins of our nether up. We don't really have too much going on. This is where we came from. We can throw it all the way back to spawn or over this way. This will take us to the desert. And actually, pretty relatively recently, it'll take us to a nether fortress as well. Now over inside of the nether fortress, we have literally nothing going on. And inside of the desert, I mean, it's literally just a desert where I harvest all of the sand for the glass that I need. So nothing really to see over there. Here, I've got a ladder that takes me down into the main nether. We're inside of the crimson forest bottom right now. But instead, I think I want to jump into this boat and sail straight down back over this way. Oh, we just hit the corner and go ahead and turn. We keep flying down this road. It's an absolute must have. Eventually landing over here, open this gate, and then we keep on moving. We need to head over to the very first outpost, and the only outpost right now that I've got inside of this world. Thanks to this ice road, it's such an easy transport. It's so quick. This spot over here is maybe the most powerful OP farm of the entire world so far. Immediately, as soon as we walk over here, we look down, it's working. The redstone is flicking, and I don't know if you can see it in there, but look at all the witches being dumped down into that farm. That thing right down there is a super efficient, in fact, as efficient as it could get witch farm. It's beautiful. This zone over here, this swamp, is formerly named Gertrude's Landing. I got this cool map situation going on over here, and as you can see from the looks of the map, basically I cleared out every tree nearby and lit it all up so I could, like, you know, maximize spawns inside of the farm if I AFK over, oh god. What is that? 
The idea here is to maximize bonds by AFK overnight. Poor Gertrude, uh, she gave her, uh, I, I can't even say it, but she gave everything for this area. And then this mob, this one on Halloween, it was pretty cool. I saved it in the boat. Now, warning, this farm is loud. It's very, very loud. At least usually it's loud. I guess it's not anymore, but this farm is beautiful. We get glowstone, redstone, sugar, gunpowder, sticks, literally everything you could dream of, and even more. It's a beautiful farm, one of the most slept on farms in all of Minecraft, and actually one of the most useful farms, too. This little zone over here, though, that's like basically all there is to it. It's a simple little swamp cleared out and maximized for a super efficient witch farm. As soon as I enter this zone, I'm up high in the sky, ready to AFK. Probably one of my favorite things about this farm is the fact that this thing will get you automatic glowstone and like a pretty decent amount of it. Especially if I were to AFK at this farm a little bit more than I have, like you get a lot, solid, decent amount of glowstone pretty easily. It's really nice absolutely here going forward my plan is to build even more outposts and actually expand this outpost probably like in that direction over there but expand it with even more farms i've always wanted to have a world where i have like different bases connected and then even more importantly at those different bases there's like a like a specific reason to actually move over to that base and go check it out like you would come to the swamp for like you know using the witch farm that activates as soon as i get a pie by the way and maybe even like using a slime farm or something that i build here as well Gertrude's Landing, this was like a big project that we did. It was called Operation Hollow. A bunch of different projects all had to like come together to actually be able to pull this one off exactly how I dreamed of pulling it off. It was nice. Sliding back inside of the nether into a boat and turning around, heading back home sweet home. The world tour and 500 days of survival Minecraft. I'm sure you could definitely find somebody out there who did a million trillion more things in their 500 days. But the point with this world was to not only show you how things are done, but also keep it a little bit more realistic. So I feel like so far, that's like a pretty realistic look at what 500 days in survival Minecraft might look like. Walking around, just drowning myself inside of all the nostalgia that has been this series so far. I've had so much fun working on it, making on it, trying to come up with like an organized order for once to like do the episodes in, and yeah, just in general, building this world up here together with you. If I had to pick a single favorite thing in this entire world, well, gosh, that's like really hard. I I almost struggle and almost literally can't pick a favorite thing, but. I mean, I guess if I had to. I mean, I guess if I had to pick a single favorite build of this entire world, I think it actually might have to be that sugar cane farm, at least right now. I don't know if it's like recency bias or what, but I love how the farm turned out, like when I'm inside of it using it, but maybe even more so how it contributes to the skyline and like fills in the base over there. I think it looks so cool. I think I love that thing and I would marry it if I could. So what is your favorite build or project of this entire world? You let me know down below. Sincerely, dearly, I would like to thank you all. In fact, hats off to you for supporting me, showing me all the love, you know, everything that you guys are always doing for me. If it wasn't for you, I truly, genuinely wouldn't be able to make this series. I am so excited for, like, I genuinely can't wait to see what we're able to pull off in these next 500 days, because now at this point, we're like at the point of thriving. Maybe we get an elytra, maybe we get netherite, maybe we even build... I don't know, like at least one more build, I would think. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tour. And if you're new here, check out the playlist next with a bunch of the episodes, or maybe even check out the movie. Chapter one of the series has a full movie. I'll leave a card on screen right now. And channel members, if you'd like to check out the world, now's your time. World download out right now. Patrons have been getting early access to every single episode, so if you'd like to catch them a little bit early, consider that. Happy holidays, everybody. This has been me, Waddles, and until next time, I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.